There is a very specific moment on the healing journey where we become sick and tired of not feeling real anymore. We become exhausted with the feeling of always existing somewhere above and behind ourselves, or maybe to the side of ourselves at the very least, not being inside of our flesh like a puppeteer pulling the strings. And this is a sign of disassociation. It's a really common thing, and increasingly more so as we spend more time on these little glowing rectangles sat down in postures where we're not vitalized inside of our physical form, and in most cases also have a background of traumatic abuse or neglect. In the previous episode of Inner Work Essentials, we looked at how to de-traumatize the chronically or acutely wounded body via somatic therapy. We looked at things like cathartic and subtle release, which I highly recommend you go back and watch before this video, because we're going to take it to the next level by focusing purely on disassociation and reversing that upwards flight towards nothingness, or maybe spiritual bypassing if you like the mystical stuff, and actually getting grounded in reality. And we're going to do this in the best way that I know possible, with Alexander Lowen and bioenergetics. Today's Inner Work Essential is The Voice of the Body by Alexander Lowen, and I am smiling because I am certain that of all the 350 books that I've read in my 27-month research period, this single book is in the top five. I think my second read is about 40 pages of uh, type notes, and not only that, I do have a bit of a crush on Alexander Lowen, even though he's uh, no longer with us. These, this book actually is a series of 22 lectures between 19... 62 and 1982. It's basically just everything you need to know. But if you want to know more, then just read the entire canon, right? I've reread most of these as well. So it's quite the challenge to summarize <laughs> a full field of somatic bioenergetic therapy in about 10 minutes. But I'm going to focus on disassociation and the voice of the body with a specific road in through grounding and identifying as a body as well as a mind. So, when can we start doing this? We can start doing this immediately with two major currents of somatic daily work, and I see this working so well with clients who I support one-on-one -on -one and in my own healing journey. This has been, no exaggeration, life-saving. It was getting grounded into my feet, and into my legs, because the issue of disassociation is that the energy leaves the majority of our body and becomes chronically tight in this band around our neck. It becomes a pressure in the head and a flight outwards, which is what I mentioned at the start of this episode. And that not only cuts off our ability to love from our heart, but it also cuts off our intuition in our belly. And very few of us who are in this dissociative state really know what it feels like to have our feet on the ground. Often I'll have people who I'm working with who say that they can't trust reality around them. They feel like everything's unsteady, like it's wobbly, like it's coming in and out of perspective. And this is classic disassociation, but it's also just not inhabiting the body. So last episode we looked at how to de-traumatize the body so that we can re-inhabit the body with more confidence. And right now I'm going to say there's no substitute than getting into contact with your legs via squatting, jumping, running. Primal movements are really good, but also being barefoot on the earth. In my own healing arc, if you want to say, there came a moment after a few years of primal jumping, ground pounding, Alexander Lowen calls it, where you just... <sighs> I'd jump if I could, but there's actually not that much ceiling space. Um, you jump flat-footed onto the earth, and also spending time in deep squats. I actually have uh, clients sometimes squatting as much as for two minutes on the hour, every hour for a full week, and the reporting between <laughs> being disassociated and being physically solid after just one week of being in a different energetic posture, just as a break, not even working all the time, like standing working is great, but being in a squat, Fantastic. Being barefoot 
is another complementary element. Going for a barefoot walk every day, ideally on grass, in a local park, if you're somewhere natural, do that. Or, even more minimally, in your garden in the morning. If you have a disassociative, derealized, um, kind of dreamy, flighty tendency where your dream states are particularly bedazzling and you find it hard to get out of bed in the morning, going outside, rain or shine, feet on the earth, <sighs> that's healing in itself. Not for one day, not for one week, not for one month, years. For me, the next level of reassociating with grounding and getting in contact with reality, in combination with all the cognitive therapies and parts work based therapies and everything that bedazzles my mind and my inner magician, to do very simple physical work. That was it. Jumping came later, starting to do parkour style movements where I'd use my leg in a vital way rather than a static squatting with a barbell on my back up and down way, which you'd think would be quite grounding, and it is quite grounding, but it's nowhere near as grounding as moving yourself through the space, because symbolically, you need to be able to know how your body moves within reality, and how you can move in more novel environments. Being in a gym, barbell on your back, and squatting up and down, no matter if you get to something like 150 kilograms for reps, you'll be very strong, but you'll also be used to being in a squat cage with weights on your back, in a very linear pattern for like 30 seconds at a time. You're not walking, you're not jumping, you're not engaging in the felt world. And that, unfortunately, creates a habit where you could be a very muscular and built kind of guy, and you'd be completely lost. Requires more than gym. Requires daily grounding work. So what's next? What's next in addition to the grounding? How can we reverse this disassociative tendency? Unfortunately, I need to shatter a myth right here. And that's the myth that you should love your body unconditionally and that that will be the way towards healing and wholeness. We discussed this idea in a previous episode of Inner Work Essentials about the subtle art of mental health, which is this idea that first you need to understand and accept before you can go to wholeness. If you can't accept an unhealthy body, maybe an overweight body or an underweight body, it doesn't mean to say you need to be judgmental and harsh, but if you know deep down that you're 10 kilograms overweight because you have unhealthy lifestyle habits, you're eating junk food, you're smoking, you're not moving, or if you know you're underweight because you have a similar set of dysfunctional habits, no amount, zero amount, of mental bypassing with a wrapping of love will make that true. You can't love a body that you also hate significantly. Of course, we close that gap over time and we separate unreality from reality in terms of what's a harsh and a critic and what is a parental interjection and what are cultural norms and standards. I'm not trying to artificially simplify it into love your body, hate your body, be athletic, and that's the only way you can be grounded. But a crucial element of re-embodying with grounding is to love being in your body. And I haven't met anyone who I look in their eyes, really look in their eyes, and they say, I love my body. And see that they mean it when they're overweight, underweight, or consuming substances like alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, on a daily or weekly basis. I don't think it's possible. I don't do it myself, I certainly have a bias, but it's something to be aware of. Any kind of disassociative, I want to leave my body activity, any kind of pattern that would increase that separation of love and desire to inhabit and ground will really get in the way. So, something to consider. Bioenergetics as a whole is something that, again, please start with this book. It's one of my top five books of everything that I've read. I think it is marvelous. It looks at things like depression, anxiety, eating disorders, relationship challenges, sexual challenges, all from a bioenergetic perspective, which means basically how energy, information, and memory get stored in the flesh and expressed through habitual patterns. If you want to get to the next level of your inner working awareness, go into the body. Go somatic, go grounded, 
and create a compassionate relationship that's based on actual practice, actual self-respecting action. Because then you're not faking your way towards wholeness. You accept something that you love. So if you want to take it to the next level, if you want to learn how to, well, I suppose, understand the emotional complexity inside of yourself, then it's important to know the levels of emotional consciousness, which is what we're going to be looking at in the very next episode. Right over here, we're going to look at the distinctions between different emotional states in the body, and through that understanding, we can get to a greater degree of clarity, and then acceptance. I'll see you over there.